מאז התקיפה בביירות נשמעים איומים מכל עבר. אנחנו ערוכים לכל תרחיש ונעמוד מלוכדים ונחושים מול כל איום. Three countries. Three different organizations senior officials. All killed in just 24 hours. In the shadow of the brutal Majdal Shams massacre, where 12 children and youths lost their lives on a soccer field to a rocket from Hezbollah, the world waited, knowing Israel would act but wondering where the hammer would fall. The answer came in the most unexpected sequence of events as Israel acted with precision and force, allegedly executing a series of high-profile assassinations within 24 hours, targeting leaders of Hezbollah, Hamas, and the IRGC, sending a powerful message to its adversaries. However, in the aftermath, one question looms large, is this the starting of an all-out war? In this episode of HT in Death, we will unravel the events of the last few days that could reshape the future of a volatile region. Late on July 29th evening, Israel made its first retaliatory move. In Beirut's southern suburbs, a precision strike eliminated Fuad Shakr, Hezbollah's top commander. סגרנו חשבון עם אורסן, ונסגור חשבון עם כל מי שפוגע בנו, כל מי שטובח בילדינו, כל מי שרוצח את אזרחינו, כל מי שפוגע במדינתנו, דמו בראשו. These strikes weren't just about hitting targets. They were about sending a message. Killing Shakr in Beirut showed Lebanon and Hezbollah that Israel could strike anywhere, anytime. Just hours later in Tehran, a missile found its mark in Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. The Hamas political chief, who was in Tehran for the official inauguration of Iranian President Masoud Pazeshkian, was killed in the strike, along with his bodyguard. However, while Israel claimed responsibility for Shukr's death, they have maintained a stoic silence on Haniyeh's assassination. However, Iran and its allies in the region were quick to blame Israel for the assassination, vowing revenge. Adding to the tension, unconfirmed reports from Syria suggest the assassination of Brigadier General Amir Ali Hajizada. a senior commander in Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps. His death in Damascus indicates Israel's intent to target Iranian influence directly, not just through proxies. ואני לא נכנע להם גם היום. לו היינו נכנעים ללחצים הללו, לא היינו מחסלים את בכירי החמאס ואלפי מחבלים. However, this wasn't just about retaliating against Hezbollah or Hamas. It was a statement to Iran, the shadowy puppet master of these groups. Israel's actions signaled its willingness to strike at the heart of the resistance camp, not just its tentacles. I think that, first of all, it was uh, a shock to the Iranian um, government that a, an assassination took place in Iran, and especially uh, right during the inauguration of their new president. So it is an insult uh, on several different uh, sides, and I think the Iranians will take this very seriously. Anger that has been triggered by the assassination both of Hania and also of Shukur, the uh, uh, leader of uh, Hezbollah, or one of the military leaders of Hezbollah just recently as well, combined to create a very volatile situation, I think, in a uh, war that had no real uh, solutions to it anyway. 
The consequences of Haniyeh's killing, in particular, could be immediate and severe. Even Israel's closest ally, the U.S. has also raised alarm over the situation. These reports over the last 24, 48 hours certainly don't help with the temperature going down. I'm not going to be Pollyannish about it. We're obviously concerned about escalation. And again, without confirming the reports over the last 24 in terms of Tehran, uh, certainly the IDF has already spoken to operations that they've conducted elsewhere. Um, uh, all of this adds to the complicated nature of what we're trying to get done. And what we're trying to get done is a ceasefire deal that can get you six weeks in phase one, get a lot of hostages, the most at risk out of there and home with their families and get some more humanitarian assistance in there. Haniyeh's assassination might throw a wrench into any potential ceasefire negotiations. As a senior figure in Hamas, his role in negotiations was crucial. His death is likely to inflame tensions, potentially leading to renewed violence. Hamas, already volatile, might simply abandon talks altogether, leading to further escalation. Well, the assassination is a very important one. Uh, first of all, he was a uh, negotiator for Hamas and had been negotiating in Qatar, which is where he normally lived, for the ceasefire deal with the United States uh, and Israel. And that probably now will not go forward, certainly not in the same way. He was known as a pragmatist. There are several uh, commentators that have noted that he was someone who was very skilled at negotiating. And so Hamas has lost an important person in their, um, in their team, but so have the uh, negotiators that have been attempting to get a ceasefire deal through. Several countries, including Russia, China and mediators like Egypt and Qatar have publicly condemned the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh, warning of an escalation of war. An official spoke on condition of anonymity because also warned about the future of the hostage and truce talks. He said and I quote, Haniyeh was the main link with Hamas leaders inside Gaza and with other Palestinian factions. He was the one we were meeting face to face and talking about the ceasefire. Israel's actions appear to be a calculated move to send a message to its enemies. No leader, no matter their rank or location, is safe. However, this strategy comes with significant risks. By targeting high profile figures, Israel may have crossed a line, pushing its adversaries towards a unified, aggressive response. This is a, an escalation, no, no question, and I think there will be some kind of retaliation. And then there's also, again, the issue of this leader in Hezbollah that uh, is, has seen an, a, uh, an attack against Lebanon right in Beirut. So I think there is every reason for possibly Hezbollah to be part of this uh, next step. Each one of these attacks have been uh, on both sides or from all sides, if you will, have been pinpoint as opposed to full scale. But we are definitely moving slowly towards greater conflict, I would, I would think, but we'll have to see. With Iran and its proxies feeling cornered, the possibility of a regional war looms large. Iran has already vowed revenge, and Hezbollah, Hamas, and even the Houthis are likely to follow suit. The assassination of these key figures could unify these groups in a retaliatory campaign against Israel, potentially drawing in other regional players. 
I think there will be a reaction. There is no question about it. But the, everybody is, is also measuring the time and they will choose the time of their own, not at the time of what Netanyahu wants, because they are already know that America is going for an elections. They know already that such kind of a provocative measure, it meant that there has to be a retaliation and Israel in a full alert. I don't think they are going to start a full-fledged war because there is also tremendous pressure on all the regional parties in the region. But it's such kind of an act of a terror attack on two two countries, sovereign nations, I think there has to be a retaliation. And I don't think that people will be sitting idle. There will be, and that is what will be the flaring up of the uncertainty around a regional war where the axis of resistance will join hand from Iran to Iraq, to Syria, to Lebanon, to Gaza, even to Yemen. And maybe Jordan can be dragged because here it is, none, nobody is able to stop this war, despite the international pressure on Israel to stop it. As the dust settles, the world watches with bated breath. Israel's bold actions have sent shockwaves through the region, raising the specter of an all-out war. Will this be the spark that ignites a broader conflict, or will diplomacy prevail?